Hello and welcome to KennyRoy.com. I'm Kenny Roy. This is the Ask Video Mail for the week of September 5th, 2011. Happy Labor Day to everyone in the U.S. Uh, the Ask Video Mail is your chance to get your question in character animation or performance answered in a video just like this one, but I need your questions if I'm going to answer them. So please send me your questions. Send them to webmaster at kennyroy.com. I go through all the questions and I answer the ones that I hope will uh, help the most people. Please, there are no stupid questions. If you haven't done the Ask Video Mail yet, uh, it's, it's really the best value on the site. You can get a 10 to 20 minute video on your question. It's just like getting you know, getting over the shoulder feedback on your work right now. So it's a huge value. Please take advantage of it if you haven't already. Don't forget to send those questions in. Uh, this week, I do get some questions that don't really lend themselves to a demo, and I wanted to answer two of them uh, just because uh, I want to give you that value for the video mail. So I'm going to answer these two questions uh, in order. So let's take a look at the questions this week. Very good questions. Uh, the first, let's talk about uh, Tween Machine and Tween Key. They are very powerful tools. The thing is, is that there's a learning curve with everything. And Tween Machine and Tween Key, they give you really, really nice results right off the bat. But you have to know, you have to be able to predict what you're going to get when you are working with any tool. See, because when it comes down to it, uh, an animator that is hireable, an animator that is dependable, can depend on their own results. And that means that you can replicate your success over and over and over. Too often I see animators open up a scene and then they have this gigantic question mark over their head, like they don't know what they're gonna do, how they're going to start. And that means that they, they really haven't committed to workflow to the extent that they need to. When you have tools at your fingertips that can shorten the process and give you better results quicker, that's, that's a godsend, right? But the double-edged sword is that with the learning curve in, in terms of being able to understand and predict the results that you're going to get, um, you, can get you can be led astray, we'll say. So um, I do uh, encourage everyone to um, always try out new tools, always be taking a look at you know, whatever there is that, you can, that you know, help your process out and, and everything like that. I'm a huge proponent of that. But I would say my caveat is that you can't depend on these things if you are struggling with your workflow. So don't get Tween Machine or Tween Key or any, any tool that helps you create breakdowns unless you know exactly what that breakdown should be. And then you can judge when you use these tools if it gives you something that's closer to what you want, okay? So it's very simple. If you are creating two poses and you use these, th these tools and you get something and you're like, mm, I guess that's better than what I would do, then you're not ready to incorporate that tool into your workflow. Whereas if you um, create a couple poses and then you're like, okay, I need this breakdown now. I know exactly what breakdown that I want and then you use the tool and then boom, it gives you something and you're like, hey, that looks almost exactly like what I wanted. I'm gonna go with that. And then that's great. That means that the tool, that your workflow is ready to accept the tool, to accept the help that the tool is giving you and, um, and you're ready to rock and roll. So don't depend on these tools to make your work better. Really only depend on them to make your work faster and easier to do. Okay, so I hope that answers your question. Um, uh, but I'm not against any tool that like saves you time or is a big shortcut or anything like that at all. No way. Um, the next question is about setting keys on all controls. And it's kind of the same thing. Um, the similarity with the, with the previous question is that you, um, I, I did mention uh, C sets. And um, uh, I did talk at length about C sets and how they can help you and how they can um, hurt you. Um, I like to create my own selection sets when I'm working on a character, especially if it has like wings or a tail or something like that, that I don't, I want to make sure that I don't leave any controls behind when I'm keying the whole thing. Um, but I would say that selecting all the controls or making your own quick select sets that you put into the shelf is better than C sets and it's better than just like selecting all the controls and keying all the controls all the time. You, um, 
um, for most people, your workflow will dictate some of these choices for you. So let me give you an example. If you are the kind of person that maybe you came from stop motion animation and you're, you're just getting into 3D, probably your workflow right now, it needs to change a little bit to take advantage of the great stuff that we have. But where it's starting is going to be a very kind of like image by image, very, very frame by frame. If that's the way you understand animation, that's fine. A lot of the guys that worked on like King Kong came from stop mo and they would work on stuff, you know, basically frame by frame. They would work on it like it was stop motion animation. It was fascinating to watch because the, what they felt that the computer gave them was this ultimate like undo. Like they could stop time on a, on a stop motion set. And by that I mean like normally if you walk your character across the screen or whatever you have to shoot it you know, shoot it in a row. And you can do pickups and whatever, and now that everything's digital, there's a lot of cheats and, and tricks that you can do to, to fix stuff, okay, uh, after the fact. But the, the point is, is that they were looking at the computer, uh, the, the single greatest asset that the, or, or um, advantage that the computer gave them was this ability to um, work on something frame by frame, but when it, when they played it back and it didn't work it quite how they want it, they'd go in and just like tweak the frame, kind of. Just like tweak that frame. Whereas a lot of us, we work with the graph editor, we work with, you know, interpolated keys, splines, tangents, all those kinds of things. So that wouldn't apply. All right? For them, of course they're going to, you know, set, you know, set a key on all controls on every single frame eventually, right? They might key it on twos in step mode or threes or fours in step mode and then break it down from there. But again, it's not going to really reflect the kind of workflow that we have when we start in 3D, okay? So um, that's one example. Another example, like kind of the opposite, is if you're um, doing something that's super physical. Uh, you know, with character anim or with a uh, big performance shot, you probably want to go a little bit more pose to pose but you're keying straight ahead pretty much with the big physical motion, especially where someone has to cover a lot of ground. If they're constantly moving and not really hitting poses, you know, if they're like, um, you know, like swatting, like there's a cloud of bees around their head stinging them and they, they're swatting them away, um, I can understand how you would probably want to um, have at least, a, 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 you know, probably on twos, um, all those controls key just so that you just can keep it, you know, everything like where you want it. And you'll probably go down to ones eventually on that, depending on how cartoony it is. Um, it depends. Everything depends, of course. But if it's a super physical shot, you're probably going to be doing a lot more um, straight ahead animation in layers. Okay, and obviously selecting all the controls and setting a key on all channels on those selected controls um, is completely against the layered approach of animation. So what I want um, both of these guys to do is to um, check out the workflow lecture if you haven't already and also check out the last couple of video mails where I talk um, about issues that are close to this issue, but um, we need to always remember that these kinds of um, questions and these um, these obstacles can always be overcome by thinking about workflow. I had a conversation, a very nice conversation with a, a professional animator um, and an uh, animation director for television today and he was talking about how he still sees and even advanced students just this big question mark over their head and how they don't feel like they have a consistent workflow. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me, this is all I talk about. So. The, 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 just this last, I know I sound like a broken record, but really this, all these questions can be answered by workflow. Do I have a method right now that kind of reflects this change that I want to make? Or is this a completely unique change? This is, a, is this a totally new direction for me to take my work? All right, that's the first question. All right, so if you don't have anything like tween machine, then the answer would be no, I don't have anything. This is a completely new, this is a departure for me, for my workflow. And then you just ask one more simple question. Wh where do I put in, insert this step into my workflow and how do I make sure, I guess it's two questions. Where do I insert it and how do I make sure that it is actually getting me uh, quicker or easier to the results that I can predict, all right? So, 
um, ask yourself, do you know exactly how good of an animator you are? I know that sounds kind of weird to ask and weird to think about, but how good of an animator are you right now? If you can, if you can imagine it, can you do it? If not, why? Chances are the answer is workflow. Chances are you're skipping a step or you have too many steps. That could be true too. That, um, and, and that situation is getting in the way of you actually being able to replicate your success when you have success and avoid failures that you've had before, okay? So don't, um, don't shy away from new workflow ideas. If you've never keyed all controls on, on, you know, uh, on a frame and you basically never built like a full body pose, all, all controls keyed, um, try it. If you've never tried tween machine, try it. But the second that you click the button and are waiting to see what you're going to get, you need to go back to workflow. Okay, so I hope that answered those two questions. Um, please send in your questions. Don't forget to send them in. It's a great way to take advantage of the site and get all the value for your subscription. Um, those questions were great. I also like to answer questions that have a demo component where I can give you the Maya file and you can take a look at it. So ask those kinds too. And uh, don't forget to submit lecture ideas in the forum called Resource Wishlist that's uh, available in the forum. Okay guys, uh, send your questions to webmaster at kennyroy.com. I look forward to seeing more questions. Good luck with your animation, and as always, rock on.